And away we go. The time is now 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, and it is time once again for the Sin Shop live stream. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, everybody in between, welcome one and welcome all. I'm looking at the wrong camera. I don't care. We're just going for it. <laughs> so on tonight's show, uh, th we have a very special guest tonight. We've got uh, ASAP from Wayward Ravens Studio. Media. 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 I knew it. Was, I, see, I was testing you and you passed. Congratulations. Yay. 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 I'll get that in the, in the, in the something. I'll get that in the email to you. All kinds of shenanigans are uh, lie ahead for us tonight. But before we get to those shenanigans, I did want to give you a, a quick announcement on the shop. Now, this all is on behalf of the Sin Shop, who is a, uh, which is a maker hacker space. Uh, located in Las Vegas, Nevada, that offers you the tools and equipment that you can use to make pretty much whatever you can think of. Now, we're officially closed for renovation, but we do have some members who are holding the shop open for limited use. So if you're in the Vegas area and you'd like to help us get back in action, or you just want to stop by and check out the shop, you can join the Discord and find out all that and much, much more. Now, in order to do that, you might say, well, I, well this sounds great. I want to join your Discord. Okay, well, fantastic. Go on over to sinshop.org forward slash discord to find the latest information on the shop. And if you'd like to make sure you're notified of our future events, including virtual ones just like this one, you can join us at meetup.com forward slash sinshop and be notified uh, for, for online shows. And when we get back in action, you will be also be notified for our uh, our in-person training, uh, you know, 3D printing classes. We have all kinds of, uh, of fun stuff. Well, we will uh, when we reopen. Okay. Okay, so first of all, who is this guy? Well. He is the creator and artist of Damn Heroes, a webcomic that tells the misadventures of doing community service in a world full of superheroes. Love that concept. We'll, we'll come back to that in a bit. Is Damn Heroes your, your primary thing, or is that just kind of like a side deal? Well, I mean, it's it's not my day job. Uh, I do have an actual day job, um, mm -hmm. but it is pretty much what I do for the most part as part of Wayward Raven. So, mm -hmm. like, each of us, we're kind of... um we're kind of like a maker space for stories. And if you really think about it, because oh, interesting. It's three, there's three of us, um, each one of us has our own little stories. We, and we collaborate on various projects. So Dame Heroes is the product of Mark Frankel, Mark, sorry, Mark C. Frankel, not to be confused with the dead actor from this yeah. vampire TV show. Totally um, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he's, he's the writer, I'm the illustrator, and this is the thing we do together. But, uh, as part of way we're Raven, we're, um, we're an indie publisher, so all of the, the materials that we publish are mostly ours. We've taken to publishing other people's works, but for the most part, it's our books. And yeah, there's that's actually, we've put ourselves in the comics, so the one with the 3D glasses is me, the Luchador mm -hmm. mask is Mark, and those are actually the titles of the Damn Heroes, like the covers of the Damn Heroes books. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, and we're just showing like like little snippets of the comics. If you want to see the 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 full comics, you can go over to uh, it's damnheroes.com, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay, damnheroes.com. Want to make sure to get that, uh, you know, uh, get that out there in, in in the very beginning here. Okay, so so is that is that kind of a one man band, or are you working with other people? You, you said you were working with it was Mark. So Mark is is my is my co-creator of this title, yeah. and he's one third of Wayward Raven. So Wayward Raven is three of us. There's me, Mark C. Frankel, and Joshua L. A. Jones. Um, mm -hmm. And you know the three of us we we collaborate on a lot of projects, as I mentioned before. Uh, usually at conventions, it's going to be me or Mark, or if you can get the full murder, all three of us will show up. Um, and we've we're mostly we we mostly focus on comic books, but we've started expanding to children's books. Uh, short stories, novels. Um, we've been also considering dabbling in some like video or audio content, but we haven't broken that yet. Literally, oh, okay. it's comics. Now. Yeah, it's mostly comics. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, so, and beer. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why children's books? <laughs> why male models? <laughs> why? Why? Uh, why did you go off into uh, into children's books? Um, I mean, profit. Uh, children's books are very, they, they do very well kids. And especially like Mark is, you know, he's a father, he's got kids. So he wants to create stuff that his kids would read. Uh, in fact, mm. they've been tortured by his daughters and my godson. Mm. Um, and children's books are really good because it's, I'm not going to say they're easy to make because comics, but comics are more time consuming. Whereas a children's book, you, you can, you, you can put, you can, it doesn't have as heavy as an editing process. It doesn't require as big of a team. 
And it's mm-hmm. yet it's another market because, you know, as us geeks get older, we have kids and we want something we can read with the kids. So yeah. we're trying to, we try to incorporate something for the whole family if that, you know, mm-hmm. without sounding too much like, you know, soul sucking marketing people. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, you definitely, you definitely don't want that. But I mean, at the same time, you know, there's the, the, uh, the eternal phrase, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. So, you know, yeah, exactly. you've got to, you got to have something that's going to, going to keep the lights on. Absolutely. Well, that's, well, that's we try to make sure that like, whatever we create is something we would want to buy for our families or for ourselves. So exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's funny you mentioned that that is, that is very similar to my, my theory on this. Like I want to make a show that I would watch yeah. and, I guess I guess I, I guess I just gotta hope that there's other people out there with the same taste as me. I mean, it's a big enough world. Well, that's that's kind of that's one of the guiding principles of a damn heroes. It's a, a lot of the times it's it's us riffing on ideas. In fact, that's kind of how it started. Um, yeah. So, like, I mean, to to kind of rewind when we created this back in 2012. Um, so, in my day job, I'm a software engineer. In Mark's day job, he was an HR recruiter, and mm. as as coincidence would happen. He pinged me for a job. I went and interviewing, and the funny part is we were, so we're on the East Coast, we're in New York City, we're in a mm-hmm. major media company's building, mm-hmm. and without naming names, one of the, the companies in the building was a comic book publisher. Mm-hmm. So I get up in the elevator for the company I was interviewing with, I go into Mark's office, again, I don't know who he is at the time, first time meeting him, and I see comic book stuff on the walls, and I'm like, Am I in the right place? This, <laughs> this, this company does radio. Why is there comic book stuff? And he explained the story. And, you yeah. know, the entire interview, we're talking comics. Yeah. So I get the job. Eventually, I get the job. I, I'm sure the comic book thing had nothing to do with it. But no. I get the job. And during our lunch breaks, because, again, we became fast friends. We're just riffing on stupid ideas from comic books. That eventually becomes Damn Heroes. Uh, like, it was uh-huh. born out of just our love and frustration of comic books and cartoons. Yeah. And I, you know, again, to just say like at the time I found out Mark was a, a writer, he was creating his own comics with, with Josh, who was like an old school friend of his. Yeah. He found out I was an illustrator and like, it just so happened. I was going to be at, at New York city comic con because I've been attending New York city comic con since like the, you know, it jumped off mm-hmm. and he was going to be there with Josh and they were going to be under their own table under what at the time was called Aegis pub. And I was like, well, why don't we do something? Like, I, I don't know if it was me or him that started it, but from all the riffing we had come up with, we eventually created what would become damn heroes. Hmm. And that was like September. We had done like, I had done some like, you know, maybe 10 strips by the time New York comic on rolled around. Yeah. And they were online, but we didn't have anything for the table except two floppies that he had and Josh had done. And I, mm-hmm. we printed out a, a stack of damn hero strips. So yeah, we're just yeah. sitting there at the table, you know, them and their exhibitors badge, me and my attendee badge. And we're just selling like little sheets of paper for like $2. Like, Hey, look at our comic. And yeah. 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 Well, yeah, so, that's the, like, yeah. well, well huh? so that's the interesting thing. And I think you're, you're about to lead into what I'm going to lead into, but so, mm-hmm. so like, here's the thing, like, like you got to realize like the, the time period we're talking about here, this is 2012. Yeah. This is September 28th, 2012. The world is wondering whether or not we're going to have a Romney or, o- or Obama. People are wondering if they're ever going to get tired of, of call me. Maybe there's this hot new thing called vine that was about to be purchased by Twitter. And you know, was going to be the next big thing for like, I don't know, a couple of years or so, you know, like, I mean, like this is a while ago and, yeah, and you was, still, yeah. you've outlasted strong bad. Like, <laughs> like that's wow, impressive. I forgot about strong bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, like, it's it, it's funny. It's like even it's been that long. Like, there's people I know who when I when we started doing shows, they were starting with us that are no longer around in the in the scene yeah. or just even creating content. So it's like, yeah, yeah. You know? So are are you surprised? Like 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 you know what was that nine years ago? Were you just like, yeah, in about nine, 10 years, <laughs> Trump will be president and we're going to have this webcomic still going. Like, uh, yeah, go I, think, I think I want to be the success of the webcomic more than anything else. But yeah, <laughs> if, if you could go back in time and put money on that, though, you'd, you'd be a gazillionaire. 
if I could figure out a way to make money off that, it'd probably, it'd probably depress me less. So yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we kind of touched on this earlier about uh the premise of the series and and yeah. i absolutely freaking love it because like one of the favorite like concepts that i've heard is damage control from in the in the marvel universe right mm -hmm. which is basically for for people that don't know what damage control is damage control is is a uh in the in the marvel comic universe it's a uh a, a, a company basically a shell company that tony stark sets up uh, to basically go in after superheroes have a giant knockdown drag out fight and and level several city blocks they go in and basically clean up the damage right mm -hmm. and uh and I absolutely loved that because that was one of the things that always kind of like kind of stuck out in my mind I guess I think about things you know from a logistics standpoint sometimes and I'm just like well how do they clean all that up and how many lawsuits are there because of that you know like you just tore down a skyscraper unannounced. Like someone's going to be angry about that. <laughs> so like, well, it is funny how, you know, there's a couple of superheroes who are lawyers. So I guess, yeah, they might have more on their retainer. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh, I cannot wait for daredevil to come back into the MCU. Oh my God. Yeah. I cannot wait for oh. that either. <laughs> oh God, wait. Okay. We got it. Well, there's a, there is a ban on Marvel movies topic. So we got it. That's not true. <laughs> it's self <-imposed. laughs> you, you know what? And we're talking comics. Oh, so uh, in the chat, uh, we got somebody that asks, what's the difference with what, between web comics and a regular comic on the web? Uh, well, so I guess the line has blurred over the years, but back when we started and even back when I started reading web comics, web comics was originally kind of like the newspaper strips that you would find in a newspaper or a book. You know, mm -hmm. like the long format, either uh, four to three to four panels, you know, bump set spike. But um, a lot of, of that has changed now, especially with the advent of stuff like Webtoons and just digital comics, which are just like the, the same, like, you know, eight by ten on a screen. Mm -hmm. The format we did was in the same vein as Calvin and Hobbes, Garfield, uh, the Saturday, the, you know, the Sunday morning newspaper comic strip. Right. For for whatever reason, I can't remember why now. That was the format we wanted. It's it, maybe it was nostalgia. Maybe it was just because that was what was I was consuming at the time. But that's that's what we went to. So we did. We tried to go more for more of a traditional comic strip web comic. Yeah. Um, now that's yeah. Like I said, it's changed, and we've been considering like either changing damn heroes to fit the new formats or creating something new for like something like a webtoons. Um, I know I, one of the things I sent you, I created like a little one shot webtoon style thing called adventures in unemployment, where it's like something that I was just dealing with after losing my job. I created a web, you know, a vertical scrolling mobile format one. Uh, uh, yeah. Where can people find that webtoons? What, what is it? Webtoons.com, I believe, uh, is the actual website, but like webtoons is just another competitor in the, in the space they're, they're they do more mobile friendly web comics. So there's like scrolls vertically. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, cool. All right, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so uh, so I, I uh, in the chat they're asking, uh, has your drawing improved over time? Like, <laughs> I guess originally oh god, Garfield yeah. didn't didn't look very good, and then eventually it looked it looked great. Uh, so you're yeah, saying, oh god, yes. Yes, leaps and bounds, leaps and bounds. Like, in fact, I sent you a couple of them. If you look at the first strip of damn heroes compared to now it, yeah. even that that was i believe that might have been the first volume of our, of our books um that was mm -hmm. when i first started dabbling with digital so when i first started drawing damn heroes it was on paper oh that's actually mm -hmm. our beer label um side tangent my co-writer mark he he homebrews so okay. i made our labels and we co-branded co it with damn heroes so that's dr entropy she's the mm -hmm. leading mad scientist of hero city so we branded it as our experimental brew because a lot of it was just like concoctions that Mark was trying to like play around with in his kitchen. Um, definitely, if you're at a show and you see us, if we're allowed to, we will have homebrew beer and it's part of our sales pitch. Very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's also by this point in Damn Heroes, we've started introducing ourselves. Um, that's Mark and me behind the table with our books. Yeah. And this was actually a very meta, a very meta strip of life at conventions. Because 
Everybody yeah. comes up to you and wants something for free. Oh my God. How many times have we been asked that? Yeah. A lot of times it's like a, I, I'll give a free high five or a smile, uh, depending mm-hmm. on how I'm feeling, I'll flip somebody the bird. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And that's actually, yeah. yeah. So to, to show the comparison, this is the latest strip that just came out now, by now I'm drawing everything full vector using affinity studio. Um, mm. it's a lot quicker and I can get a more consistent, uh, approach to the art style. But if you go back to some of the early stuff, it's very crude, hand drawn, badly inked, badly lettered. It's it was I I was kind of embarrassed putting out the first book because even from page one to the last page, it's a marked improvement. Because if you think about it, each book is two years of progress. It's a weekly webcomic, you know, so it's about like what is it like a hundred and six and four pages, roughly, maybe with yeah. some extra added stuff. Like, yeah, that's the first New Year's strip I did. And that's, uh, and this is actually was, uh, Sebastian Bonet, who I believe is going to be our next week's guest. He did a guest yeah. for yeah. us. Yeah. So like, that was funny. Just happy coincidence that Sebastian is the name of our main character. And then Sebastian Bonet is guest, uh, drawing on it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like yeah, even, he's... even, sorry, like even not just for damn heroes, my own art style from just drawing, nearly daily uh for the last eight years i've Mm -hmm. it's it's leaps and bounds ahead of what uh of what i used to be able to do yeah and that's actually me drawing sebastian in there too so (laughs) that's nice that's awesome yeah no no he's he he, he's just a hoot i can't wait to uh to have him back on uh or to have him on i i went on his show when was that i guess two weeks ago i think it was closer to three weeks ago um, because I did, uh, uh, we were talking about, uh, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Super good. Oh, nice. Super good. Oh, and that's, that, that's that man Stanley. I did that actually as a tribute for when he passed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's said, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah even so, okay. oh, go ahead. Get it too. Like, the way I've done the characters has changed. Like, um, doc, that's, uh, Captain Righteous, our, our, our main superhero and parole officer. And he even his jaw has changed. I've str- I've made his body a little more consistent, made, very top heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was cool. And that's, yeah, we always try to do a holiday strip, so that's Santa yeah. during the pandemic with the toilet paper. So, <laughs> so you mentioned about the uh, um, you mentioned before about the uh, uh, the unemployment one that you made that was kind of as a result of you ha- you losing your job, like like everybody yeah. did i think last year i think everybody just played musical chairs with all the jobs it's just yeah. like, like okay everybody stop having a job for a year okay now start having a job <laughs> well okay. actually for me so, uh adventures and unemployment uh it did it came out way before this last thing um oh, really? as someone like my day job uh software engineer sometimes you work for startups sometimes you work for big company mm. And there's always that roll of the dice every year. Are we going to get funding? You know, we just merged with a competitor. Are you going to still keep your job? And yeah. the the irony was that time I had lost my job at a big media company. Mm-hmm. Did that strip uh, just to kind of deal with the stress of losing my job. Start, yeah. Went to a startup. And within the first year, we lost my job again. And I was considering doing a follow-up. To, to that but since i got a new job so quickly i was like ah just i don't need to, to deal with this but that one was <laughs> it was very much um self-help therapy but also like trying something different you know yeah so so i guess my question would be then was it the same with the guy doing community service because yours is ultimately not really about damage control like you know like we were talking about before but it's about a guy that has to do community service in a in a city full of superheroes yeah yeah so l- let's to rewind a little bit the 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 idea came about about like what if you live what if you were the only normal person in a town full of superheroes you know right. it's just the absurdity of like these people going about doing these fantastical things and you're the one schmuck who's just a normal guy um mm-hmm. so the idea was like how do we get this person in in this uh, situation the idea that started is he is try he's driving through through Hero City and he goes five miles over the speed limit, just five miles, <laughs> and they're so right. super like strict about things and just ridiculously mm-hmm. law abiding that he gets sentenced to five years of community service. We picked wow. five years. I think it was around the same time as like 
maybe new 52 came ar- around or, or was like something with, with the number five years for like, was the magic number in comics. So we mm-hmm. just said five years, hopefully all, our, our show will run like half of that time. But like, that was the idea. So we, his parole officer now is Captain Righteous, an overly righteous, but kind of dumb superhero. But since Mark and I, we identify more as super villains. We, mm-hmm. We've made it like where he is not only sentenced to community service, he lives with the preeminent supervillain, Captain uh, Dr. Entropy, who mm. uh, is that purple robe figure you'll see. And the idea is he, Sebastian, the main character, also serves as her experiment and punching bag. And the whole, the whole premise of it is like we started with more of the superhero thing. Uh, a lot of it was like the memes and pop culture of superheroes. Yeah. But then it became more slice of life and just taking the mundane and boring and adding that fantastical aspect, but inverting it so that, it again, it's a punching bag for the normal person. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. So so basically the community, so it's, it's, in a way, you know what it reminds me of, actually, is uh, it's kind of like a, a idiocracy in reverse. Yes. It's, yeah. Instead of there being mm-hmm. one average guy in a world of dumb people, it's one average guy in a world of, of like extremely everything people. Yeah. yeah, but again, all the superheroes are just super dumb. You know, they're, they're very literal. They're just they're 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 the like if you condensed the 1930s, 1940s, 50s, like mm-hmm. the golden age superheroes to their logical extreme, they're just like overly red. It's like yes, yeah. we must do good because we must save the citizens. And then like all the villains are like, why do these jerks keep beating us? You know, <laughs> <But> <laughs> how is this even possible? Lar would do, <laughs> yeah. because what? Because, but it's not on the the same level of darkness as like a Mark Millar thing, where the supervillains will try to take over the world. They're just like, we just want to get by, man. We just want to play with our science equipment, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, wow. Yeah. So, uh, so speaking of, uh, uh, nope, that's a terrible segue. Uh, I was gonna say speaking of playing with things, but whatever. But it is the top of the hour, and it is, of course, time to uh, remind you uh, all uh, what this is all about here. Uh, we are uh, currently talking with uh, ASAP, a.k.a. Alex. Uh, from, I didn't put it on this. Wayward Raven. Wayward Raven. Yes. Oh, media. Media, that's the one. My brain was going, <laughs> say studios. No brain, it's not studios. A lot of people say studios. studios so we probably should put that in somehow but yeah waywardraven.com is the website wayward raven media finger on facebook check us out awesome. <laughs> yep yeah. and then also damn heroes uh, if you're in chat right now on uh, on twitch you can scroll up and uh, and the links there uh if you're watching us tomorrow on youtube uh, the link will be down in the doobly doo down below uh speaking of our fine youtube viewers uh just a, a quick reminder you are getting a condensed a shrunken down version a little 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 morsel of the show uh we film live on friday nights on twitch at twitch.tv forward slash sin shop uh this uh this whole thing is on behalf of the sin shop and for more information on the shop uh you can go to sinshop.org to find out more about that uh, and uh you can join our discord at sinshop.org forward slash discord uh to get yourself an invite to that Oh yeah. So yes. okay. So uh, I got a community service idea. Say at the chat instead of parking lots, he needs to hang up superhero capes like a coat checker because they don't need cars. So like some big hero event, like he's the idea. coat checker. He's the coat checker, and the villains try to burn the capes because with no capes, they can't fly. <laughs> You're gonna have to give me the name of the person who's, who suggested that, so I can give him a shout out when we do that. All right, yeah. all right. Well, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's life's lesson is the is the name. There you go. Life's you're gonna be you're Thank you. internet you famous. <laughs> you will be yes, that's right. You will have yes. you will have ones of fans. <laughs> be one more than us. <laughs> maybe, yep, yep. maybe maybe tens, maybe tens of fans. You never know. Could catch fire. You 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 don't know. All right, so we, we so, put Sebastian through the ringer in our in our books. Like he's been the the, the clown at a retired superhero community. Um, mm-hmm. He's been the mask of a beholder for you know for oh. COVID safety. Um, he's even been used to test catapults. So <laughs> oh yeah. So see, he's kind of when I'm not when I'm not crying in the corner rethinking my life choices to become a computer engineer. Oh, well, fair enough. Um, yeah, my life. So <laughs> yeah, right. 
So, so, okay. So speaking of hard jobs. Yeah. One thing about like uh, doing a show like this is that it is not, it's not really hard. It's really not. Uh, you you got to have technical knowledge. You got to be able to carry on a conversation. You got to be able to keep things moving and all that. But honestly, I, I, I find cool people and I, and I talk to them and I push buttons while I do it. And I bring that up to say this, you, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't have that luxury. You have to actually come up with a premise. You got to have a joke. You got to make it funny. And then you got to put it on the internet. So like, mm-hmm. do you have like a formula that you use? Like, like the, the three panel comic, like, is there, is there a thing that you, that you use to come up with that? Or is it like, I mean, well, we tried as, 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 this is going to sound very much like a like a sales pitchy elevator pitch type of thing. We try to find absurdity in the mundane, and that has become the formula now. A lot of times, it's like um, Mark. So Mark is the one who usually writes our strips, but a lot of times I'll even suggest things. Or um, now, because like to rewind a little bit, Mark and I we used to work in the same job, so a lot of times during lunch we'd riff on ideas. We'd be doing our mutual jobs, and we'd send each other texts like, "Yo." come to my office right now. We, I've got a stupid idea. And a lot of then that's where how our writing process has evolved. Instead of mm-hmm. us being in the same room, now we're virtual. Uh, you know, he lives in Connecticut. I'm in New Jersey. So even before lockdown, we were always virtual or we'd come up with stupid ideas in a hotel room at a con. Um, but it's just like, what is the, the dumbest thing that happened to you this week or this month? And we try to figure out how to put that into our story. Like um, when, when, when lockdown happened, a lot of the, the mask regulations or just the idea of not being able to be face to face, that was the, the, what's kicked off maybe a, a couple of months worth of strips. Um, whatever movies or TV shows we were watching, those became our premises. In fact, I, I vaguely remember like when we first were um, in the office together, we, um, it was around the same time when Jane Foster became the became Thor, right? Mm-hmm. We had always hinted that Doctor Entropy was was a woman, but I never just never drew her that way for you know for whatever reason we were just trying to go for an ambiguous character because of the idea of like characters constantly being rebooted in different formats in different mm-hmm. ways and the reboots of movies. We came up with a stupid idea it was like Doctor Entropy gets rebooted mid sentence. Literally mid sentence, like panel one, <laughs> one way, panel two, completely different, mid sentence, for yeah. no reason, and it's like, so it's like we try to find like that level of, of absurdity. That is the writing process for damn heroes, um, and a lot of other uh, projects we've worked on. So, um, Mark, uh, you know, uh, outside of writing and his day job as HR, he studied mythology and the classics. So did Josh, you know, and I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm Greek. So I was born into mythology. So a lot of our stories outside of Damiro's have a taste of mythology in them. Like Horseman was Mm. based off of Horseman of the Apocalypse. Um, Our children's book, Percy, is about a a Babylonian creature trying to find more of of himself. This new Mm. project we're working on, we're, we're trying to figure out how to tie in the comic convention culture with Egyptian mythology. It's just, it's, oh. it's like, so those are like, you know, outside of Dan Heroes, like the, some of the influences and just our process is like, Hey, this dumb thing happened, or I have this stupid idea. Let's just play with it. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're standing on, you're eating an ice cream cone. You drop the ice cream on the ground. Ah, oh, Hey, wait, what would a guy do in a superhero? Yeah. City? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In yeah. fact, we do have an ice cream monster in one of our strips. So, Oh, well, look, at that. I, <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be your, your guest writer. No, I'm not. I'm absolutely not. <laughs> no, I got it. Uh, so usually, like I said, it's Mark and Josh. We both do it together. I mean, sorry, yeah, Mark yeah. and I do it together. Josh, for the first time uh, a couple weeks back, he wrote a series of strips. Um, and it, like, it was, a, it was, his idea was he read an article that like uh, antidepressants that people take and urinate into, you know, ends up in the, in our rivers and yeah. the fish are taking antidepressants. So yeah. he had this idea, like, what if, like, Dr. Entropy or Sebastian poured some, like, supervillain concoction down the drain, and the fish rise up with, like, superpowers, and they kill Aquaman. Right. 
And right, so that right, was right. like, it was like we did a funeral for Aquaman as a strip because of this. And like one of the things is like we have like 1950s greasers angler fish in, in a red convertible fishing for humans on the street. <laughs> it was like it was just like absurd, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. that that makes that one make a lot more yeah. sense now. Like, yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Like, cause cause I saw that strip and I was like, like it reminds me of something. And like, you know, oh, you're the one that poured the, uh, you know, technically you're the one that poured the pills down the drain or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, very cool. So do you do you ever like? I mean, I'm sure there's t- there there have been episodes of the of the strip where you sit back and you 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 just finish it. And you're like, nailed it. But are there any that are like not that? Yeah, we we've had we've had a couple that have fallen um, flat a couple times. Like I think my wife is my biggest critic too of our strips. Um, a mm. lot of times I'll pull her like, "What do you think of this?" She's like, "Yeah, you guys need to stop. <laughs> this is not funny." <laughs> yeah. Oh. And, okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. Always get someone who doesn't read comics to review her comics because if they like it, then you know it's you've got something. Um, yeah. But a lot of times we try to make each other laugh. Um, but because like, you know, there's sometimes like it doesn't hit like um, I can't think of a specific uh, strip, but there have been a couple of times Mark has written something and I'm like, I don't I literally don't get what the joke is in this. And when he explains mm-hmm. it to me, like that saying, if somebody has to explain the joke, it's not funny. Right. And then we have to kind of stop and be like, OK, well, how do we actually make this funny so that right. I don't have to explain the damn joke? Um, so like that's that's part of our editing editing process. Um, and even that sometimes like, you know, we, a couple of stinkers might fall through, but usually I, you know, our quality control is, does it get a giggle from the other person? Yeah. 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 I mean, at, at some point though, like, I guess you gotta be concerned, like you, you have to, uh, you have to make sure it doesn't like, like what I, what I always refer to it as, as uh, disappearing up your own butt. Like you can't, you can't like. Like be like, oh, I, you know, I am self self referential, and I'm going to reference this thing and that thing and that thing. And I realized that, granted, I'm wearing a T-shirt that references episode eight of this show. <laughs> so, like, you know, okay. Well, but, I mean, we since it's a, since it's a web comic and it goes up on a on a WordPress blog. If yeah. we ever catch that, like, okay, this is a reference to a previous comic, we at least do the due diligence and point it out. It's sometimes uh-huh. actually this this is a funny story. We we rec- so we recently did a strip where Sebastian, our main character, decides to grow a beard. And halfway through the run, I'm drawing I'm 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 drawing this thing. So I'm like, Mark, I know we've done this before. Mm-hmm. I'm certain about it. So I went through our catalog and I'm like, yes, we literally did the same joke like three, four years ago. Yeah. So we in, we injected a strip in between the run where Sebastian, our main character, he looks at this at this bottle of like hair growth formula. He's like, I feel like this is I've done this before. And we actually use the panels from the previous one. And it's like, now nah, it must be in my imagination. <laughs> <laughs> we catch it. You know, we're, we're nerding enough where we catch ourselves and we just have fun with that. <laughs> like I've yeah, actually yeah. used, um, especially now it's all digital. I've used. Uh, assets from previous versions. I've referenced background characters and I try to make sure that it's consistent. So not only is it self-referential, it's kind of a reward for people who've been reading it long enough. Yeah. 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 I I, I like stuff like that, like little Easter eggs. I mean, you know, like the the Marvel series is, is full of stuff like that. You know, like it's, it's one, I, I don't know how they manage to keep from disappearing up their own butts. Like, but they do, I think yeah. either that or I've just lived there now. We all live in the Marvel universe, technically yeah. New York and stuff. And oh, Vegas well, that's and, a good point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So okay, so those are the times where where you're like, okay, well, that one wasn't wasn't the best, but at least you got something out the door. Like, do you ever have yeah. situations where you're just sitting there, like it's the night before release, and you're like, I don't know, maybe we could have him uh, not tie his shoelaces. You know what I mean? Like, do you ever come with just some some things that's just like, okay, no, I can't even. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I will say I'm glad that we've never missed a deadline, even with like family emergencies and deaths in the family. But there have been times we've come close, and usually that's like so. Like the script, the strip goes up Wednesday. There have been a couple of times where it's like Tuesday afternoon night, and we're like, we do we have anything ready? It's like shit. Oh, 
sorry, no, we don't have anything. <laughs> like, and it's like, okay, furious texting, furious texting. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> and it's like, and sometimes we've had three or four strip stories come out of just a furious texting match. Yeah. There've been a couple of times where we've, we've gone super lazy. Um, I remember one specific thing where we did um, for like April. So we love doing like holiday strips, April fools and stuff like that. We did yeah. one strip. It was like an April fools joke where Mark just grabbed some crayons from a coworker's kid and just do- doodled it. And I wrote blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And we had another instance again for April fool's day where it was like roses are red, violets are blue. You wanted a web con comic, but we fooled you. And it was like, we would just do some random, no art trolling of our audience. Just mm-hmm. sometimes we don't have an idea and sometimes that becomes the idea. So yeah, we have yeah. to our feet is the short answer. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's interesting. Like, cause you can, if, if you are, are, I guess in tune with your own, I don't know. I don't know if it's in tune with your own style is, is the right way to put it. But anyway, you can make that into something that actually hits. Like uh, a lot of people may not know this, but you know, uh, in the song, sweet child of mine, right. Where they do the bridge and they go, where do we go? Where do we go now? You know, that part, mm-hmm. they didn't know where to go with the song. That's that what that was. Brilliant. That is brilliant. That's brilliant. Okay. That's, that's the origins of that of, of that line is is they were like okay where do we go now we've we've done the sweet child of mine thing i've done and that that riff that that slash plays is uh it, that was his scale exercise that was an exercise yeah. that he would do before playing and yeah. axel rose comes in and is like what is that that sounds awesome and he's like this this is an exercise no 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 keep going and they made a song out of it um mm-hmm. so yeah we do the can, comic uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So you guys are you, there. You go. There's there's a, a quote for your book, the the Guns and Roses of web comics. <laughs> that's great. The I, Mighty Pong. I, I, I call it Guns on Slash. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. The awesome, awesome top hat. And plus, he, well, he definitely I wear a top hat in the comics sometimes. So yeah, and I, I I have one off screen right now. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, so, okay. It sounds like the way that you manage a uh, uh, writer's block is just basically like, like kind of a, uh, uh, kind of jujitsu sort of, it's like, oh, here comes writer's block. I'm going to turn this into productivity. That's, that's exa- that is the best way I've heard it described. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. It's, so it's, it, it's funny because like, um, especially it, what's harder is dealing with writer, writer's block for serious projects. Mm-hmm. Um, like, so like, you know, I've been, I've been dabbling in writing and, you know, Mark, Josh and I, during the pandemic, we've been coming up with a new story. And a lot of times with, when we find ourselves blocked on a story, that's pretty much what we do. We just start rambling about something completely unrelated. And because mm-hmm. I think we're so much in sync, it just kind of loops back like light bulb. That's what we're doing. Yep. yep. I used to have this thing where, uh, if I was, if I was trying to program something, I would write it out in the crudest possible terms possible, like that I won't even repeat on 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 the show tonight. Uh, not saying Guns N' Roses are bad, but Slash definitely does his best stuff with Miles Kennedy. Well, that's fair. Um, yeah, Axel Rose, he didn't he didn't he didn't do so well. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not I go there. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he's he's over there. He's doing his thing. Um, yeah. So um, I had a point, and then I lost it. Um, ah, man. Well, now I can't remember it, but I, I guess we'll, we'll move forward. Um, I have that yeah. effect on podcasts. Oh. <laughs> and, and fair so. enough. Fair enough. So actually, uh, one of the things that, uh, oh snap, they about to fight. No, no, they, no, they not. Um, the, uh, oh, how long does it take to make a single strip? Um, now depends on how long the song is. Ah, <laughs> um, no. it right now since it's all done in vectors, it really depends on how many new assets I have to create. My average might be two to three hours now. When I first started, it was five to ten hours. Mm-hmm. So like again, going from like hand drawn, where I've got to you know blue inks, scan it in, clean it up, color in, blah blah yeah. blah. Now yeah. it's vectors. I'm reusing a lot of the same assets, just changing poses. And if yeah. I need to create a new asset, that might take me 30 to 40 minutes each asset 
depending on the complexity. Mm -hmm. But it's become like, I can do it. I do it mindlessly now. And for the people interested in the technology, I, I either do it on, um, on, on iMac or I can actually do it on an iPad pro now. So like a lot of times at conventions, I'll have my iPad pro. I'll just do that. Or if I want to just sit on the deck, I'll do it there. Yeah. Do you ever work ahead? Like, like have the next several weeks lined up? It, it varies. Um, I try to do that, but it's not as easy as it sounds. And usually if I'm planning on like not being able to keep a schedule, I'll do it ahead. Like, uh, two years ago when, um, I was, I was going on vacation. Um, I was planning on doing a trip to Greece and then my buddy was getting married in Hawaii. I knew like, I'd be like, I'm vacationing during this, this two month period. I drew like three months worth of strips ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So they were just gone. They were just there and I can do what I wanted. And then when I got back, I had to play catch up. And also when Sebastian did a, our guest strips, he did like two months of strips ahead of time. So I had oh, a little wow. bit, I used that time to kind of build up my buffer again. Now yeah. I, I, unfortunately I do it week to week. Um, but if I know something's coming down the pipe, I'll have stuff like lined up and usually scripts, we have maybe about a month or two of scripts planned ahead of time. Yeah. So like, at least I know I can just get in and draw. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Th- no, that's awesome. Like uh, for the very first time in, in pretty much the entire show's history, I'm booked for the next month. That's a, that's, it's, it's yeah, kind of yeah. weird. Like I'm oh. a little, I'm a little, I'm a little scared. Cause I'm like getting professional at this. Uh, it, it, we got a new oh. Yeah. Say say one more time. So now you need to just take a break and become unprofessional again. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that'll happen. That that'll happen naturally in the in the in the due course of time. So uh, about Wayward Raven. Um. So we talked before a little bit about the the children's books and all that stuff. Um. Do you still actually make physical comic books? Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um. We so- we haven't stopped that honestly. Like, cause so we know fans love comic fans want to collect They're collectors by nature. They want something physical, tangible. Um, yeah. And I, I always have, I always have them on hand. So, um, but it's like with, with the lockdown now, we haven't stopped creating new books. Like we just recently did a Kickstarter and you know, we printed those out. But we mm-hmm. also know some people just want to read the story, so we also provide the digital versions. Um, mm-hmm. So we, we we haven't really changed much of that. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like one thing, a long, long time ago, I used to uh, I used to have a, a very, very small record label, and we did like bootleg dance remixes of stuff, and nice. uh, and it was all thousand copy, you know, thousand press run, uh, you know, not nothing, nothing big at all. But one of the hardest things to do was to actually find someone who would still, you know, even in the 90s, because, you know, the, it hadn't gone through the big resurgence yet. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was pretty much just the domain of dance music for the most part. Right. Uh, but finding someone that could actually freaking print, you know, they, they would press records still. There was only like, I yeah. think, two or three companies left in the U.S. So, like, is that a similar situation with comic books, like, where you have to, like, you got to know somebody that knows somebody. Oh, yeah, I know a guy with a printing press. Not not as much, actually. It's it's still a big thing. Um, the, the, oh, really? The caveat is finding a good printer, you know? Ah, okay. Yeah, like, there's some, there, so, like, the whole, what we go through since we're, we're still a small press, we're not, like, we're nowhere near as, like, big, big as image and, Oni Press or even, you know, Marvel and DC, we, we do like very small runs. So for Mm -hmm. us, it's finally someone who can do print on demand, small orders that aren't, aren't going to kill us and and kill our profit margins. Cause again, Mm -hmm. we we're not doing this for free. Um, Right. But also that has the level of customer service and can deliver on time. So Mm -hmm. right now, when we did our recent Kickstarter, we tried a new printer we're happy with them so far. The quality is great. The price is great. And they're not, um, I think I, f- I forget if they're based in the UK or mm-hmm. local. Um, cause Mark usually deals with that stuff, but we didn't have to deal with like having to order ball get printed in China and then just coming literally on the slow boat. Like we've did with other companies 
this came yeah. immediately. It was really timely. So I think that's, mm-hmm. that's been like the biggest challenge, finding someone who can balance small orders, but keep it affordable and timely, you know? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's so, so it sounds like there's quite a few different uh, places that you can pick from, right? There's not just like two or three printers that still do comic books. It's like open we, the yellow pages. What, what kind of saddens me is I had a friend uh, he used to work for a major comic book company. And then after um, he got laid off from that years ago, he started working for a local comic. Uh, they were doing their printing press. They also did comics and he did a lot of my personal art prints and he was going to be doing our comic book prints, but because of lockdown and COVID and all that stuff, they went out of business. And mm-hmm. that, was, that really saddens me that not only did my friend lose his job, but of we had a very good local printer where I could have literally walked over to pick up my books practically, you know? Mm-hmm. So like yeah. now we still got to ship, but you know, so far knock on wood, it has, you know, it hasn't gone away yet. That sounds like that, that, that seems kind of like one of those uh, advantages to being on the East coast, like being in a place like New Jersey or, you know, or, or New York, you know, being able to have all of that, production around you so that you do have multiple action, uh, options. I mean, like, do you think that you could run the same level of, um, you know, level of production if you were in like Des Moines, Iowa or something like that? Maybe, maybe not Des Moines, but I do, I do know a lot of like any people who are in more rural areas, they have a little bit of oh. a logistic headache, but I still feel like, um, printing is still achievable nowadays. Um, there's yeah. some, uh, there's another company we used in the past. They were based out of Chicago. And I mean, granted, they printed their books in China, but you, I know people on the West Coast and the Midwest who are getting books from them. So mm-hmm. yeah. that's actually a picture wow. of our booth, usually our setup. Yeah. 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 So this is what you would take to Comic Con right here. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember yeah. which show that was at, but yeah. So mm-hmm. Something that had a date on there, I thought, but maybe, maybe not. So yeah, so the other thing that I that I always had a, a real pain dealing with, but then again, you know, the '90s, whatever, uh, was yeah. distribution. So like the way That's it, it used to be, yeah, yeah, yeah Sorry, the, no, the, the way. It, no, it's okay. There's a there's like a little like a couple second lag between us. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the the thing that that we used to have to do is we had to be in uh, in a music distributor, and we had and they would put us out in a fax. That was just basically our name and the title of the song and a very brief description. And that was all that we had to be able to sell it. And people would mark down if they wanted to buy any at all and, and go from there. Uh, so like how in the world, how does it work when you are making a limited run of your comic and you want to, and you want to distribute that to comic shops everywhere? Like, how does that, how does that work? Well, unfortunately, the only thing that's been working for us is conversations like this where we get our, our, ourselves out through improper distribution channels. So without going into the politics of it uh, in in this country, I guess, I don't know if it, how it works internationally, but there is literally one company that distributes comics to all the comic book stores across the country. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. we are not in their circulation. So we've kind of had to kind of weave around that we've gone through some local like super local new york city connecticut uh shops where we do things on consignment we leave our books with them um we've been and and cons are the way we really get our stuff out there um yeah in fact you know cons are really good for us We, we we've been doing a lot of them on the east coast for the last nine years we've made it once to the west coast for um san diego comic con We've been trying mm-hmm. to find more sh- places in the middle of the country. Like um, we, we did a show a few years ago, uh, Heroes Con. At, uh, was it Heroes Con? Uh, in Charlotte. Um, mm-hmm. And I would love to come out to Vegas to do a show there sometime soon. Um, outside of that, we found a printer that also handles some distribution. So oh. they do a lot of like graphic novels. Like they, they do trade paperbacks and graphic novels. And allegedly they put our books in stores like in a barnes and noble though not a comic book shop unfortunately 
Okay. Um, we've been trying to like find comic book shops who would be willing to carry a books. It's not been as as great as we would have liked, but it's it's getting there. Hmm. Um, and so right now, what we really do, if we can't do shows, we sell our books online. So if you go to WaverRaven.com, we have a shop. You can buy any of our books. They'll be delivered to your door. Um, and if you're a local comic shop, definitely reach out to us. We'll we'd love to get our books in your store. Um, but lastly, all of our, a lot of our catalog is also on Amazon. So we've been trying yeah. to use like digital services to get our stuff out there. And again, all of our books are available uh, in PDF. We're on Comicsology. We're on Global mm-hmm. Comics. In fact, I want to give Global Comics a shout out. They're a great group of people. They're letting people read digital comics at a really good price, uh, free. And a lot of our books are available either previews for free or free on their platform. Um, and mm-hmm. again, we provide our uh, our PDFs, uh, yeah, DRM free PDFs on our website. Um, and we're always giving away stuff for free too. Um, and Dan Bureau is always free on the website. Nice. So that there covers the gap, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I'll tell you what. So, so this is uh, we are at the bottom of the hour, which means, unfortunately, for the uh, for our fine YouTube friends, uh, this is where we are going to be parting ways. Uh, this is the end of the YouTube segment of this. But if you're watching us on Twitch Live right now, you got a whole another hour ish, give or take, uh, coming up here very shortly. Uh, it, it, and it's too bad, YouTube guys, because here's what you missed. Here's what you're gonna miss. You're gonna miss the I can't read comic books story. You're gonna miss that. Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk a whole bunch about uh, oh, about uh, setting up a website. We're gonna talk about uh, automation. You completely missed the benevolent laziness story. I mean, I mean, I mean, come on. So head on over to twitch.tv forward slash sin shop s y n s h o p and you can see all that in the uh, video on demand. We keep it up there for I, I believe it's like three weeks, something like that. Three weeks, sixty days, some somewhere in that general vicinity. Uh, but you can watch it over the next few weeks. Now, it, again, though, if you are watching on YouTube and you like what you see, you know, thumbs up, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but if you don't, if you don't like what you see, drop us a comment. Tell us why. Uh, we do read the comments and we do respond to the comments. So we we definitely want to hear from you and uh, and do the show together. ASAP, Alex, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, DamnHeroes.com. Add the, the <laughs> waywardraven.com, of course. Yep. That's where you want to go right there. We'll be right back. All right.